Alright, next up on Wily's Castle. I am fairly certain I know what this stage is. Oh yeah, I definitely know what it is. I know this level pretty damn well, because it has what is easily the worst boss in the game. Again, if you don't have full Crash Bomber, get full Crash Bomber. You're gonna need it. The stage itself isn't too bad, though, and if I remember correctly, the first gimmick is False Floors, right? Yeah, maybe? Pretty sure. I mean, there's that very hard to dodge metal right there, but thanks to him I can refill that a little more. I'll also need that, but I believe the first gimmick is the false floor thing. No, still not just yet. We have that metal right there, but <laughs> he's just gonna run along for no real reason. Alright, there we go. So if we try to run along here, we might slip through the floors, but I know where the little fake platforms actually are, so this is too dangerous for me. I believe bubble lead is what you want because that travels along the ground. I mean, it would be pretty bad to have to make the player guess where the actual floor is, especially when instant death is what you get for guessing wrong. Uh, you can also use item 2, of course, though, and honestly that's probably the best idea just because there's really no more use for it. Of course, we also have this little platforming section returning from Crash Man stage, complete with the rotating trash cans. Good to see those guys again. Oh, I guess we're not seeing them here, though. You just have to make sure to jump at just the right place here, otherwise... Yeah, you're not making through that. You're not making it through that hole. You, you will just get knocked off into the spikes and die. Now, this is the trickiest one, because we've got to be careful where we are. And we have the rotating trash cans, and quite frankly, those guys get a little close for comfort, and it's a tad difficult to actually hit them. Also, you might want full HP as well. Why do they call it HP? This isn't an RPG at all. Therefore, it can never be called HP, ever. Uh, but in all seriousness, you're also going to want plenty of health, and therefore, probably plenty of E-Tanks at that. E-Tanks would definitely help. Try not to waste those up until this point. One more of these. Again, item 2 is very helpful here, because otherwise you kind of just have to wait around, because see, you can't travel when it's up there. You have to wait and then jump across the pit. It's honestly not a huge, difficult jump, but uh, it does make you wait around, and I'd prefer not to do that. Now, these guys are going to be problematic, just because, well, they're, they're not the hardest jumping enemies in the series. They can't take away a bit of health, and also, great enemy placement right there. Thanks for that game, just making it impossible to pass Sniper Joe. Really nice of you, and yeah, I'm, I'm gonna take that. I don't care what you say, game. I will be having that. Okay, why do they have the impossible to dodge one before the possible to dodge one? That doesn't even begin to make sense. Right, so, everyone thinks this is the worst boss in the game, because it is. There are two methods to go about this. First off, you can destroy all these walls, and then die. You'll have to redo quite a bit of the level, but once you come back to the boss, then the walls will be destroyed and you can crash bomber them normally. And by the way, uh, this is the boo beam trap, get it, because it sounds like boo beam trap, except they're actually beams, but anyway, yeah. These guys suck because they can only be hit by the crash bomber. That is their only weakness. Now, I'm doing this the method in which you have to have a full Crash Bomber, and you'll have just enough to be able to destroy these guys. Y you don't have any lenience whatsoever, so you have to figure out the exact path you have to go to, and while it is possible to avoid their attacks, it's damn hard to do so. Like, they home right in on you and move way too fast to dodge. Thankfully, though, yeah, they're finished. And what did I tell you? Exactly enough Crash Bomber to kill these guys. It's just so badly designed. I mean, I've seen people hate Mega Man 2 because of this boss, and that's a little unfair, because all Mega Man games have bad bosses at some point or another, and in general, their Wily Castles are bad. I mean, that one is a particularly bad boss, but I don't think it's worth saying the entire game is bad because of it. So anyway, 
Boss refight time. Here we have Heatman. Of course, while he's a very hot customer, he is very weak to water. He does not like water in general, in general, and while he does enjoy barbecues, he hates water and cold things in general, like ice cream, as the wiki says. Airman here, while he is very tough, he is taken out by leaves because they jam his fans. Of course, approaching him is the problem because he can blow away leaves as well, but once they actually get in there, he's taken down no problem. Next boss is... Woodman. He's made of wood. You can burn him very easily, because even some of his circuits are wood. Good fucking job, Wily. Really, really good job with that one. Next up, we have Bubble Man. He's weak to Metal Blade because, well, his ability is bubbles. Therefore, we pop them and everything's good. A lot of the Robot Master weaknesses are explained in kind of creative ways, but Bubble Man? Nah, he's pretty basic. Next up, we have Quick Man, who's a bit of an interesting case because he's weak to Flash Stopper. Most of Wily's creations were actually made resistant to Flash Stopper. However, there is a design flaw with Quick Man, so he can't be damaged by it. You do have to do the rest of your work yourself, though. However, he's also weak to Air Shooter because he's made of such light materials that he's able to be blown away fairly easily, which I think is pretty cool. That's a uh, pretty neat weakness, actually. I like how creative they are with it. As for Crash Man, he's weak to Air Shooter. I don't really know why, though. There's not exactly a huge reason for it. It's just, I guess, his bombs are swept up or something. I don't know. They didn't give much of an explanation for this. Anyway, Metal Man has a major design flaw. You want to know what it is? He's weak to his own weapon. He's actually weak to the Mega Buster as well, so, um... Metal Man is kind of terrible. I think he's actually Inafune's least favorite robot master just because he's so easy. And last on the list is Flash Man. Who I'm just going to kill normally. Because why not? I mean, he's weak to the Crash Bomber, but I don't exactly have that at the moment because I wasted it all. But, um, yeah, that's what you would use if you had it. But you probably don't unless you took the death route. Okay, so it's time for Wily Machine. First off, he uses fairly easy to dodge swirling patterns, but his second pattern actually uses bouncing shots, which are much harder to dodge. He's still weak to atomic fire, I believe, but air shooter also works. And oh dear, this is very bad. Let's just finish him off like that. There we go. And that finishes him off? Hey, you weren't supposed to escape. That's supposed to be the end of it. Well, it did seem a little easy, so I guess that's fair enough. Alright, we be... So, we begin the final area of the game by falling deep, deep into this cavern. No music's playing, and once we reach the bottom... That's probably not blood dripping from the ceiling, but... No matter what it is, it's, uh... Kinda spooky, actually. We just hear drops falling from the ceiling have to make our way to the final door. Now the nice part is, if you happen to run out of weapon energy for this next boss, uh, dying and getting him game over will just set you back to the beginning of that area, so it's not a problem. Alright, Wally, what do you have now? Why are you, why are you flying? Oh my god, he was an alien all along! What a twist! Right, it's time for the final battle. He's gonna move around in a figure 8 pattern, or infinity symbol, I guess. Alright, what are we attacking with? Our standard buster's not doing anything, neither is atomic fire. Air shooter didn't affect him at all. Leaf shield? Yeah, well, that didn't do a thing. Yeah, definitely doesn't seem to be working. What about the quick boomerang? Well, that didn't really seem to work, but I don't think I hit him in the first place, but either way, yeah, I didn't see that working. And even the Metal Blade's not effective against him. So what could be effective? I can't believe it, but it's Bubble Lead. One of the least useful weapons in the game, pretty much the only thing it was useful 
grateful for up to this point is finding those fake platforms and beating Heat Man. That was just about it, but it is the only thing that Wily Alien is weak to. So, yeah, we're pretty much stuck with this fairly short-ranged weapon. While his shots are very easy to dodge, having to get up so close to him does put you at a bit of a disadvantage. Thankfully, though, his flight pattern is fairly obvious, so it's not like he won't know where he is at all times, or where he's going, either. So, once you figure out his weakness, and as long as you have plenty of weapon energy to actually defeat him with it, this fight is pretty much in the bag. Oh jeez, another seizure warning. Come on, guys. That is painful. Oh my god! I'm also going to have to warn for ear pain. Oh, please stop those sounds. Please stop those sounds. Wily, it's a hologram. We get it. Please just shut it off faster. There. It was just pathetically destroyed. And Wily bows down to us. He is defeated. And thus, he will never be evil again. So, that's it for Mega Man 2. I have to admit, it, while it's not the best in the series, I think I like 4 a little bit more. It is pretty solidly designed overall, and it's a huge step over Mega Man 1. Like seriously, in just about everything. Gameplay, music, how it looks, you know, all that stuff is just way better. I think I like the weapons a little better, so... And it was a surprisingly big step in the right direction, and... Later games would take a few missteps, but also make improvements over Mega Man 2, but all in all, this game is one of the most solid in the series, and I'm not just saying that because of the music. The level design's also pretty good most of the time. And it is a very fun game. And of course, it doesn't have the two sets of final stages like in the later games, so I don't think it overstays its welcome at all. Nor is it as dated as the first game, so... Mega Man 2, pretty good game. And no, it's not ruined by the one terrible boss, even if Boo Beam is a very, very bad boss. But there's really not that much else to say about this game, it's just a very solid Mega Man overall, and it's definitely one of the best of the classic series, so... I guess that's it for now, I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you next time for whatever I do next.